You know, in school and college, when I read any book, I used to write down the lines I liked, or then used to note down all the new information I read about. Then I don't remember when, but I stopped doing that. A few months ago, I started reading *Origin of Species* by Charles Darwin. There is so much exciting information in the book, which blows my mind. But a week down the road, and I wonder what was that plant or animal or that interesting research that I read about. It happens to a lot of books that I read, and there is a quote to the effect that I cannot remember the books I have read any more than the meals I have eaten. Even so, they have made me. This year, I'm making changes to the way I read. I started taking notes, and if I find something fascinating, then I pause and read more on the topic on the internet and watch videos about it, and explain interesting stuff I read to my friends and family. It's a slower version of reading books, but I would like to retain and recall information, especially when it comes to certain books, like she has her mother's laugh. But if I decided to take notes from this book, then I'll be basically writing the whole book. The book is huge, 550 pages, but not a page, not a line is wasted. It's just full of mind-boggling information. Many times I feel that if I had the access to these kinds of books in my childhood, then the entire course of my career would have been completely different. She has her mother's laugh. Is the best book on genetics that I have read so far. Zimmer is a science writer, and his books are an example of the best kind of science writing. And also, his books are some of the best books that I read in the last couple of years. What I like the most about Zimmer's writing is he uses a lot of examples and case studies to help illustrate and explain the basic theories, sharing with you. A couple of interesting things that I learned from this book: mothers and their unborn babies trade DNA back and forth through the placenta, and each retains that DNA for years. And if the mother has additional babies, some of the firstborn's DNA can get passed on to the next child, and so on. And the baby stem cells can get into the mother's body and can stay there forever, and can also pick up new roles in her body, even healing it. In one truly wild case, a woman with hepatitis had an entire lobe of her liver regrown with Y chromosome bearing cells, whose paternity was traced to her boyfriend. Turns out she had had an abortion years before, but. The male fetuses, stem cells, stuck around and made themselves useful. So the mothers back inherit genes from babies via reverse travel up through the placenta. That made me wonder about the impact of DNA transfer in surrogate mothers. Mothers and children are connected in more ways than we understand. Then there is this whole concept of chimeras. Opposite sex twins can exchange stem cells or even fuse as embryos. The result is confusion. Some cells in the resulting child may be XX and some may be XY. Zimmer explains the gene editing technique known as CRISPR that has challenged the ethics of gene engineering. CRISPR is an extremely fascinating topic to learn, and I have already talked about CRISPR in another video, and you can find its link in the description of this video. There is so much more in the book, all told with marvelous stories. Zimmer leaves no topic unexplored, from history to the future, from eugenics to in vitro fertilization, from cancer to evolution. It's all there, and it's all tremendous. I found exactly zero weaknesses in this book, and highly recommend it to anyone wanting to expand their knowledge about how we got here and where we all are going. I feel we are much better off being informed on this subject than not. Misconception about heredity has led to a lot of evil in this world, such as racism and eugenics and killings happening in the name of Gotra system. We need to be better informed and should face the future with wisdom rather than ignorance. I know you will love this book. Happy reading.